What's up, Nets fans? What's up, Nets fans? It's your man, Mizzo. And you know I'm upbeat because we got a W, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's right, we got another W. Our third victory of the season. It was against the Pelicans. It wasn't easy. It looked like it was going to be easy. It wasn't easy. We're going to talk about those kind of things. And you know how the Nets like to... You know how the Nets try to do, man. They like to get a big lead and for some reason let the let the team come back in the game so we can have something interesting to watch, apparently. But it, nonetheless, it was a great game. Let's get right into it. All right, in the first quarter, we look good back in our statement jerseys. I love those jerseys, by the way. If you like them, put some comments. If you don't like them, put some comments. But if you don't like them, there's something wrong with you because they're really, really drippy, all right? They got a lot of drip, all right? But let's keep going. They go up early behind some nice ball movement and some hot shooting. Like I said, from the start, the guys came out with a different level of focus since they lost that last game. We're not going to talk about it. They came with a different level of focus. Karis LeVert, he was driving, he was shooting, he was passing the ball. You know how Karis LeVert does. He was one of the catalysts behind this victory, but we're going to talk about him a little bit later. DJ looked good defensively. I seen some nice blocks. Remember we talked about DJ last game and the stuff that he was doing and we did not like it at all. DJ, we like what you did, especially in the first quarter. Garrett Temple, listen man, this is the third getting, not third straight, but it's the third game that I'm talking about Garrett Temple, how he's coming off the bench, he's providing a level of intensity defensively that, oh, that we, we, we just love. And then when you offer it up with some offense, Oh yeah, we love it, we love it. He was one of the catalysts. It looked like Rodion's Karuks is still struggling. He did not score again. I don't know what's going on. He refuses to take that three-pointer when he's open. I don't know if his confidence is shot. Rodion, we love you. You are my favorite Latvian. And that's a fact. Come on, Rody. We need you to step up a little bit. And then the Nets get up double-digit lead by the end of the first quarter. So we are looking good. But guess what? Quarter two, they get back into their old ways of not taking care of the ball. Listen, turnovers, every keys and observations we've talked about. Turnovers, and this game was not no wasn't an exception. So Okay, turnovers put the Pelicans right back into the game. Turnovers, turnovers, but Kyrie comes in. Kyrie! Kyrie comes up and he comes up looking masterful. He was dribbling all over the place. I know why he does. Hitting some nice mid-range shots. Hitting some three, some nice deep threes too. We love all of that. So then the Nets start to build the lead back behind Kyrie, Karras, and Garrett Temple. I believe at the half, Kyrie had 15, Karras had 13. Garrett Temple off the bench with 10. We love it. All right, let's get straight to the third quarter. Oh no, right before that, we ended up with a 17 point lead. I want to tell you that our perimeter D was great. The offense was great. We shot 53% at the half and they shot 37%. Usually I don't give you the percentage. I have reasoning behind everything. Now, let's go to the third quarter. Hot shooting, ball movement continues in here. We go at 20 points with that smooth pass by Kyrie to, to, I forget who it was, I believe it was Joe Harris who hit that three. If it's not, don't kill me. My memory, uh, uh, it'll lose my memory right now. But let's keep going. Sick assist from, from Harris to Kyrie. It looked like Kyrie was going to get on that dunk. I remember that dunk that, that Gary Temple, um, that Gary Temple had in the beginning of the half. Kyrie and them, they was making fun. Kyrie, okay, I understand KD making fun of Kyrie. I never see you dunk. I believe they just made a stat. I, I heard a stat the other day. You have 19 total dunks. What is that? Or uh, is it for your career? Anyway, 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 anyway. We're just gonna keep. You got no right to be making fun of nobody. So Kyrie, he gets that nice pass that looked like a dunk, but it was not a dunk. And then that's when everything starts to unravel. The Pelicans start showing 77. Kali Yente sizzling in the third quarter to bring them right back into the game. They cut the lead 
Uh, I believe they even tied it up. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jordan gets hurt in that third quarter. The third quarter is not a defensive, uh, not a good defensive quarter. Kyrie, he was the only bright. Kyrie was the only bright spot. He scored 18 big ones in the third quarter. Sizzling, cutting, dribbling, shooting. Kyrie had the whole repertoire going, but we're going to talk about him a little bit later. Um, and then we'll go to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter is when I started to panic a little bit because the Pelicans were getting right back into it behind Brandon Ingram. We're going to talk about you, Brandon Ingram, because, man, did you improve. We're going we're gonna to give you a little highlight. Um, and behind Brandon Ingram, however, in the fourth quarter, I must say this, Dinwiddie, you are my G. We do not say the Dinwiddie without the my G. However, I did with my third eye. Remember, that's the theme for today, third eye. With my third eye, I saw Dinwiddie start to turn over the ball again, a la the Detroit game in the third quarter when he turned over the ball he bounced back with a nice fourth quarter but you could see once he started doing things like that you got to keep him on a short leash even Kyrie once again I saw with my third eye I watched that game very very meticulously and I saw Kyrie reprimand Dinwiddie and he did not like it Dinwiddie you have to take that. You have to eat those because you were turning the ball over. Kyrie is the star player. He's not supposed to say any old thing to you. But if you're turning over the ball and you're costing us a game and he's telling you about yourself, you cannot go back and forth with Kyrie, especially Kyrie. I know you guys are cool and all that, but at the end of the day, nah, Dinwiddie. But you did show support as they took you out, which it, which is what they should have did in the Detroit game. Okay, so kudos to you, Coach Kenny. You took them when you out, you put Karras in, and all sanity was restored. Karras finding, closing, passing, shooting. Kyrie closing, passing, shooting. And we got the W, and I'm a happy camper, and I'm grateful. Brooklyn, let's go to the next set. All right, Nets fans. Yes, we're happy. Why? We born. Yeah. Okay, that means it's time for that guy that helped us to the victory. What do we call him again? Hmm. Hmm. Who? Who? Hooper of the night. And it was once again Kyrie. Kyrie only didn't get one Hooper of the night all season. Torreon had that 27-point uh, game against the uh, Rockets, and he had that one hoop of the night. But all other games, I mean, if I was to read you Kyrie's, before this game yesterday, I believe Kyrie was averaging 31, about 8 assists, about 7 boards, shooting phenomenally. So, really, do you, do you mind me giving them hooper of the night? Of course not. He scored 39 big points in 35 minutes. A little bit more than this than he's used to. He's usually hovers around the 31 to 32 to 33. Unless 35 is usually when we go in um, overtime or something like that. Okay, so 13 for 21. Sizzling. We love that percentage. That's well above, well above 50%. He shot two for six from downtown. That's not bad. It's um we he also had four rebounds. What else did he have? He had nine assists. That means he was facilitating. That's right, Kyrie, the facilitator. We we love we love that. So in the last three games, he had 10, 10, and nine assists. Woo! I foresee Kyrie having his best assist um um output of his career. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. Um, he also had three steals. We love three steals. Remember last game, he didn't have anything at all. We love that. That means he was playing defense. I know you guys saw them little strippies he had on um, Brandon Ingram, Duke on Duke Crime. Boo, dude. Tar Heel Nation. Uh, just had to get that out there. Um, and he was also a plus 11. Not that I know what that means anyway, but 
Kyrie once again in that third quarter. I told you he scored 18 points. In that fourth quarter, he was the closer. They couldn't hold him. I know y'all saw a couple of them layups that he hit. Why does his layups look so good? They look like I'd rather see his layups than certain people dunk. Like Gary Temple. We we'd rather see we rather see Kyrie lay up than Gary Temple dunk. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. I I I but Kyrie, uh, beautiful, masterful. Thank God he's on our team. Uh, can't wait for KD, but while we wait for KD, Kyrie is putting on a show, especially at the Barclays. So we gotta give him some love. Um, let's get into some honorable mentions though. Karis Levert, once again, Karis 23, 7 and 5. Karis keeps trying to break through to that hoop for the night, man, but you Kyrie Irving is your teammate. He just keeps doing a little bit better than you in terms of the stats. You know what I mean? You guys, uh, trust me. Kyrie carries backcourt. Oh, Lord. The league is on notice. You guys are on notice because these guys are playing stopping. Goes all types of stuff. So we got to give it to um, Karis LeVert. He had 23 points plus 14, uh, 5 assists, 7 rebounds. We love it. We love it. We love it. Uh, another another honorable mention. Remember, I was talking. I talked some some junk about you last game, Jared Allen. But you stepped up. You look so good. You look like you were ready. I don't know if it was because you were seeing young boy. I forget his name, Jackson Jackson Hayes, who's also a Longhorn. I don't know, but you look so good. You look like last year's Jared. We need them free throws to drop. But you look like last year's Jared. Great, 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 great job, great job, Jared Allen. 18 points, I believe 11 rebounds. Let me just check, I think it was 10. 10 rebounds, we'll take it. Turn on point, turn on Prince. 12 points, 11 rebounds, double, double. Uh, uh, who else? Who else can we talk about? Gary Temple, 13 points off the bench. One steal, two rebounds, plus six, couple of threes. We love it, no waste man, no waste man. Rody, I'm watching you, Rody. I'm not gonna make you waste your honorable mention. You keep honorable, they're not giving you enough minutes. And it's because you're on a short leash right now, Rody. Rody, get it together, please. Please. And Latvia, you my guy. All right. All right, guys. All right, guys. You know what it is. Let's get into some keys. Let's get into some observations, stuff that we saw, some good things, some bad, and things that just made us go, hmm. Okay. Let's get right into it. All right. Something I saw, this has nothing to do with our team, but something that I observed with my third eye. Brandon, Brandon Ingram. He had 40 big ones. He only eclipsed Kyrie's point total by one point. But wrong. Brandon Ingram, he looked good. He looked so, I mean, he shot. He shot so efficiently. He was hitting threes. He was hitting mid ranges. Shout out to you, Brandon Ingram. I didn't know what you really did for your first, uh, I don't know what year you were in at this point of your career, but I just, everybody loved you. The Lakers didn't want to give you away. I'm like, why? What, what does Brandon Ingram do, really? But you definitely show me, and you've been showing this entire season without Zion. Um, what kind of scoring power you can really be? I believe like your top top five is scoring right now, um, and that and that forty points is not gonna be um, that forty points is only gonna boost it up. So shout out to you, shout out to everything you've been doing. Um, also, some keys, some other keys that I, I noticed is that the Nets. This is gonna be your thing. Um, you're gonna get leads, and you're just gonna chill. I don't know why. I don't know why you want to do this to your fans. Um, I'm a faithful fan, but sometimes you, you know, I just want to watch the game and just, 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 just not have any cardiac arrest threats or, or, or any, any type of. I, I just want to watch the game and just be easy. If you guys know what that is, I'm from Brooklyn. We say we be easy out here. I want to be easy when I'm watching that game. That's why do we have to get up? And then why do we lose 20 point leads? Horrible. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Why do we turn over the ball so much? I don't like it. I don't like it. I do not like it. So I'll give I'll get to some positives. 
Although you guys did let these guys back into the game, you were able to close it out. I can't say that about all the games. Now imagine if we were able to close out um, all the games that we let these guys come back. Like Detroit. Um, that one still hurts. Yes, it still hurts. I'm sorry. I keep talking about it because it still hurts. Um, you know, and 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 um, we were able to prevail over the Knicks. Uh, Memphis. What kind of record would we have if we do not let these teams come back? Right? What kind of record? Minnesota? Right? And all I'm saying is let's let's keep it together. Let's get it straight for a full 48. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Um so great positives. Um you know the way that we were shooting, I will get into some numbers. Uh we shot 53% tonight, 16 for 41. We shot 39% from three. They shot 40. You know, we got we got that perimeter D is lacking, guys. That perimeter D is lacking. We shot 21 to 28. It's a little bit better from free throws, but we gotta get better. We gotta get better. We out rebounded them. That's great. Even with us losing DJ, uh, we still were able to out rebound them, which is awesome. We we got to have more offensive and more defensive rebounds than them, which is great. The ball was moving. This is the key stat. 32 assists. I love, love 30 plus assists. Anything 25 plus assists is good with me. But when you do 30 plus assists, I love that as a team. So you guys, you guys did your thing, man. I mean, those are the great things. We, we saw some great things today. Woo! So happy we won that. My heart was pounding. I thought you guys, you know, I don't trust y'all like that yet, man. Cause, you know what I'm saying? I let teams come back, you know? But, guess what? This one's over. This one's over. We've absorbed it. We've talked about it. Let's go to the next game. We won't have a game until Friday. The guys are on a West Coast trip. That's why this game was important. Because we can't go on the West Coast trip. Losers of two, right? Morale is up. Guys are happy. Um, we're gonna go see Portland. And we play them at 10 p.m. in Portland, 11 8. That is November 8th at 10 p.m. Brooklyn Nets go visit the Portland Trail Blazers, our first game of the, of the road trip. What do you guys think? Are we gonna win that game? Are you gonna be watching? You know I am. Why? Because I can't get enough Nets. They're so good. They're exciting to watch even when they lose. So, for everybody at BK Nets work, don't forget to follow us at BK Nets Work. That's on the gram, by the way. <sighs> I'm sitting pretty, baby. I'm doing it. We're going to close out with Brooklyn. And I'm grateful, Brooklyn. And I'm grateful, Brooklyn. It's your man, Mizzle. Peace.